Thank you very much. Good morning, everybody. First of all, okay. Well, um, I, I want to apologize because I must have missed some information. Okay. I have my slides in okay, Portuguese. Yeah. I'm very sorry for that. I'm going to try no to, do, to do my presentation in English. Yeah, no. I hope not no, to no, be too be. slow. No, 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 no. So, well, uh, my presentation it's is not preferable. exactly a scientific one. I'm, he I'm a mechanical engineer. I'm not a meteorologist. So, my purpose being here is more to give you a testimony to the meteorologists about uh, other fields of uh, interest uh, that use uh, what comes from meteorology and that up to uh, some years ago was not seen as uh, interesting applications of meteorology. So I'm, I'm going to talk about um, wind energy prediction, wind power prediction uh, uh, by numerical models. That's a summary. Um, um, I don't know, how does it work? I like this. Well, um, everybody knows that Portugal is a, a successful history in wind energy. We have quite a lot of generating capacity already installed. We have uh, a f uh, fifth or sixth uh, uh, ranking in the uh, uh, place in the European ranking. Uh, the installed uh, power is still increasing at a very uh, strong rate. And uh, we have now uh, more or less uh, 3,700 megawatt of installed capacity. These are figures from the end of 2009, um, which uh, rises the percentage of generating capacity due to wind to about 20%, slightly more than 20%. Well, um, it, um, it, uh, uh, 20% is quite a lot, and it means that the electrical system really needs information about what's coming done concerning the wind. It is uh, more or less impossible to manage the system without that kind of information. Uh, concerning energy, uh, that's more for engineers, but I, I have to mention this because power is not energy. We need wind to produce energy. And, but still concerning energy, uh, renewables have a very important quota of the electricity that is produced in Portugal, and the wind in particular is increasing very much in the uh, most recent years. We see that uh, in 2009, for instance, and Portugal is well known by its tradition in hydroelectric power plants, but during 2009 we had almost the same amount of energy coming from wind than from water. That's a very important, um, that's a very important milestone, let's say. Well, um, why uh, do we need uh, uh, forecasting? Uh, many reasons. Uh, I try to uh, concentrate in these four uh, reasons. Everybody knows, and everybody in the here much much better than me. Then uh, wind uh, varies quite a lot, and sometimes it varies very strongly in very small periods, giving uh, place to what we call ramps in power, and that's a very uh, difficult event to manage by the system. Electrical grids and uh, and the production centers. Uh, need to keep uh, an interest, a, a good quality of service, otherwise we will ask them for that. Uh, the rising, uh, the, the, the increase in the generating capacity uh, makes the system more vulnerable. We are installing more and more power. Uh, even if spreading the power along the country uh, makes things a little easier, but nevertheless, uh, as more power the system incorporates, as more important the prediction is or the forecasting. And furthermore, from the side of the, the, the promoters of the wind farm owners, the possibility to participate in the energy markets absolutely uh, needs that uh, they have the forecasting of the production at least for the next day. So uh, these are the reasons why uh, forecasting is, is, is necessary. Uh, what for? So to manage the electrical systems, uh, to manage uh, special events in the grid, to manage the reserve, uh, the, the groups that need to, to, to be ready to, 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 to enter in service if there is no wind, uh, to, um, to manage and to define strategies for storage, that's a very important issue. Storage is uh, one of the most uh, uh, important uh, issues to be dealt uh, when uh, renewables are in cause, and uh, for the uh, operation and maintenance of wind farms and the participation on the market. So there are a lot of um, connections, let's say, uh, among the actors that participate in these 
uh, in this sector, the, the, the wind energy sector. Well, forecastings can be done at uh, very different uh, uh, horizons, let's say. Um, uh, for us, um, working in wind energy, the short, uh, the, um, how, how do you say, the, 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 the short-term predictions and uh, the, the medium-term and the, the long-term predictions are the more important, but here I'm talking specifically on the short-term predictions. There are also very, very short-term predictions that can be important in wind energy to manage the wind uh, turbine in it uh, from uh, uh, operational point of view, but that's not the point here. So predictions from some hours to uh, three days, let's say, is what uh, effectively the, the sector needs from, from the, the, the meteorologists. Uh, the models can be, I, I'm talking about uh, wind power prediction, forecasting models, not numerical weather prediction models, okay? So the models can be physical models, statistical models, or hybrid models, of course, as always. And uh, here, uh, we can, we can, uh, we have examples of many of those models running in Europe. Some are purely physical models, others are purely statistical models, and others are hybrid models. We know, for instance, in Portugal there are presently two models uh, running, two systems, let's say, running. One that Professor Delgado Domingues already mentioned, the one that is used by the Portuguese TSO, and the one that is perhaps less known, that's the one we are running. When I say we, I mean a group uh, uh, that uh, is, um, that uh, uh, integrates the University of Lisbon, Faculty of Sciences, and the University of Porto, three institutes in Porto, INEGI, INESC, Porto, and the Center for uh, Atmospheric Research and uh, Wind Energy in Porto. Um, purely statistical models have proven to be uh, not uh, very accurate when, they, when the, the forecast horizon exceeds about six hours. In such cases, uh, they absolutely need to be prepared to integrate uh, some uh, meteorological variables as wind velocity, but not only, to uh, give more, uh, more accurate uh, forecasts. Well, uh, we must keep in mind that the velocity is the raw uh, wind is the raw material for wind energy. Sometimes we forget it, uh, and uh, we must take it, we must keep in mind also that uh, the the um, the wind turbines react not linearly to the uh, the variations of the wind speed. So the prediction of the wind speed is really a very important issue for us. Furthermore, and unfortunately. Uh, Power curves of a wind turbine as not, are not as beautiful as this one uh, looks, uh, but uh, more like this. I mean, there is a big scatter uh, in the operation of the wind farms, so to have uh, a, a good prediction for the wind speed is, of course, very interesting and important, but not enough because there is not a deterministic relation between uh, the wind velocity and the output of the, of the turbine. Uh, but things can look even worse than these, for, for instance, these, and these are operational data. So you can see that uh, uh, the prediction of, of uh, the, the, the power of a wind turbine is much more than predicting the wind. So it's, it's a difficult matter. 